What's the word, y'all? We're finally doing the Bulls video because there's no better time than right now because I got a lot to say. Today, we were down by 19 to the Orlando Magic, fought all the way back to get the lead, and then lost in the game winner to Jalen Suggs. First, first of all, Jalen Suggs has been clutch as hell this season. He had some big-time shots against the Warriors a couple weeks ago, and now you can tell he wanted the shot because before he hit the actual shot, he attempted, like, the two shots before the actual shot. So shout-out to Jalen Suggs. He's a big-time gamer. Um, but we, we got to talk about the Bulls. And I know today's slate of basketball was great, and there's a lot, to, a lot of things to talk about, like the Boston Celtics looking like the best team in basketball, Laurie Market versus Devin Booker, Embiid single-handedly, almost single-handedly beating the Bucks, and there was, some, there was a video that came out after that game i'm recording this video that that the Giannis pushing the ladder thing just happened i don't know if we got an expect explanation by the time y'all see this video whatever i, I want to talk about my bulls because i had little to no expectation coming into the season and i'm still disappointed um people believe that just because i've worked with the bulls on like merch collaboration shout out to, to everybody that copped that or they send me city jerseys and i have fun with the content team they think that because of that i can't be critical of the organization because because now they know who i am but this is what i have to say to those people i will never ever ever stop speaking my opinion no matter who i'm working for no matter who I'm working with, all right? Because the people in that content room are Bulls fans as well. And I, I'm only speaking for myself when I when I talk about frustrations, but they realize that too. If they if they not gonna cut me off, right? They're not gonna cut me off from me being critical of the roster. I hope not, but I'm still gonna do what I gotta do. So this is not about necessarily today's game, even though we will reference today's game quite a bit. This is like something that has been brewing the entire season. In this game, the pot has boiled over, if you will. I'm recording this. Other games are still going on, y'all. I'm being disingenuous. Larry Marketing versus Devin Booker still going on. Larry Marketing just got a big time dunk with two minutes ago. Shout out to Larry Marketing. The honeymoon stage is over between us and that roster. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say me because, again, I only speak for myself. I'm not the spokesperson of Bulls fandom. But last season, when we were on that hot streak and we started off or went into the all-star break with the best record in the Eastern Conference, you remember those days? Man, that was great. There were very little people on this earth that really thought the Chicago Bulls were a contender. But we were having damn fun, and that's all that really mattered. And for the last, I would want to say, seven to eight months, I've been wrestling with my personal opinion about the Chicago Bulls team. Because for a while, I, I, I believe that there is value in being good. Even if that means my team makes the playoffs in the first round exit for three straight years, there, there's value to being good, especially for a team that for the last five years have been at the bottom of the lottery to finally get a roster that's good enough to compete every single night after being deprived of that for so long is great. But it's only been one season and I'm already done with the it's OK to be good. I think most of that is because the avenue for us to become one of those really good teams just doesn't really exist. It just, it just doesn't really exist. I'm trying to think of a, a, a roster that I could compare it to. Let's say the Toronto Raptors, right? The Toronto Raptors roster is good right now. They are not a championship contender, but they're good right now with an avenue to become a championship contender because they have all of their draft capital, because they have Scotty Barnes, who's in a sophomore slump, but people, and me included, still believe he's special, and they have a lot of things working in their direction. Right now, the Bulls have a roster with, with max players, no draft capital for this season, and no direction. This team was built to be good now, and they're being unsuccessful at being good now. Everybody knows that the Vucevic trade is extremely bad. We, we know that. Two first-round picks plus Wendell Carter plus this and that. All right, it's, it's, it's a bad thing, especially because that pick that we wanted, the picks that we traded away turned to Franz Wagner, who killed us today. And then that second pick conveys this season if it's outside of the top four. And a lot of people will tell you that this draft class is absolutely stacked. And right now, the Bulls are a lottery team. Not, not bad enough to get the one through four pick, but you know, the, the flat odds maybe it's a possibility, but... We, by what the Bulls luck, we gonna have like the seventh overall pick again, and it's gonna go to the Orlando Magic, who we're gonna draft another stud. Shout out to the Magic for finessing the Bulls, and they're pretty much the first trade under the new regime. And I think the reason why that trade hurts so much is because Vucevic has not been good. We traded for an All Star version of a player. We haven't even got a, a third of that. It, at least that's what it feels like as somebody that's watching them every single night. I mean, to, tonight, and for example. He missed two free throws, two very clutch free throws that two seconds later, Jalen Suggs hit a game winner. We hit one of those free throws, we in OT. We hit both, we still win the game more likely than not. I tweeted about this before, a little while ago, about how difficult it is to build a really, really good team when your starting center is a below average defender. 
if you look around the league, every single team that we we would deem as really good has a at least average to a below above average center or a small ball lineup that has somebody that will be playing their pseudo five that is a really plus defender. And the Bulls don't have an avenue to go small because anytime we go small, we have a 6'6 Derrick Jones Jr. as a small. And then when we're big, Vucevic is, is just not him. And we knew that going into it. We knew that he wasn't a good defender, but we thought that the offense would be so damn good that that didn't matter. I mean, the Celtics have Al Horford and Robert Williams. The Bucks have a really good defensive center and Brooke Lopez who might win defensive player of the year. Clint Capella. Um, uh, and Yaka Kongo, both good defensive centers. We got the Cleveland Cavaliers. They got Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. Out West, you got like Yusuf Nurkic at the top of the conference. Look at that. Is that sustainable? I guess we'll find out. Shout out to the Trailblazers. We got the Suns who have DeAndre Aiden. And though he may not be the best defender of all time, he's definitely a better defender. <laughs> definitely a better defender than what we're getting from Vooch. We got Jaren. You got Jokic who isn't a great defender, but his offense is so damn good that, you know, it, it balances out quite well. But you get what I'm saying. These teams have really good or good defensive centers, and we have one of the worst. But up until like a week ago, the Bulls were a top five defense in basketball. And though I was talking about it, having fun about it on my podcast, I knew it wasn't sustainable, y'all. Look at our roster. Look at the, look at the roster. And now we're down to earth on the defensive side of the ball, and the offense ain't heated up. We have the 25th worst offense in basketball over the last two weeks in the 26th defense. I'm going to tell you right now, that ain't good enough to win a single game, even if it is against the Orlando Magic, who ain't won a game on the road all season until tonight, which is crazy because if you look at our three most paid players, our three stars, because even on the Bulls broadcast, they still refer to the Chicago Bulls as a team that has three all-stars. Let's be real, Adam Amin, Stacey King, I love y'all. We don't got three all-stars, right? DeMar DeRozan, amazing offensive player. Zach Levine feel like he can give you 25 in his sleep. And Vucevic was supposed to be one of the best offensive centers in basketball. But, with, but together, they are ass offensively. There's so, there's so much stagnation at work that we just made up. There's no movement whatsoever. It is a pick that will not lead to a road man getting the pass. And then it is an isolation for Zach and DeMar. And I'm giving DeMar's credit at another 40 piece a day and he can be lights out. He has been lights out. Zach Levy can be lights out. He has not been this season. Let's be real. The, the knee is really bothering him. $215 million. He got benched at the end of the fourth quarter because we needed somebody else that can actually perform. These guys all together have had a negative net rating since they've been together. And last year, I saw that, and it wasn't by a lot. And I was like, you know what? This is the first year playing together. It'll be better for next season. It's way worse this year than it was last year. These guys, Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, cannot play on the court together because Levine, DeRozan, and Vucevic are all negative defenders. And if the offense ain't, ain't buzzing, then nothing is happening. The only time the Bulls' offense was really buzzing was when Lonzo Ball was in the lineup. And you know why? Because the boys ran. The boys got steals. The boys got in transition and turn those transition buckets into a competent offense. But right now, there's only there's only energy coming from Alex Caruso, who get paid money to literally come in get steals. We don't ask him to shoot no shots. We don't ask him to do nothing but get steals, play good defense, and cause turnovers. And Javante Green, who didn't even play in the first half because Billy Donovan didn't trust him no more. Those are the only two players that play with any type of urgency, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The only two. You're not going to win games like that. You're just not going to win games like that. And I, I got to say it, I have to say it, Billy has to be better. I know a lot of Bulls fans are already calling for his head, and I don't, even, I don't even mind y'all saying that because it ain't like he done anything extraordinary. Him completely uh, continuing to start Ayo, Zach, DeMar, Pat, and Vooch after he sees the numbers that this lineup has together, him continuously putting that out to start games and the Bulls digging themselves a hole in the first quarter every single game, and he's like, you know what, that's all right. We're going to do it. It's mind-blowing to me. I don't have a solution. It's either send Ayo to the bench or send Pat to the bench because let's be real, Pat. Let's be real, Bulls Nation. You know? You know? Today we saw Javante Green come out in the second half where the Bulls were down by 19 and immediately have an a, a impactful part of the game. Steals, drawing fouls, dunking the ball. He did everything. Stacey King said there's five Javante Greens out there, and the Bulls are going to need all five to win this game. We got all five and still lost, you know? 
we we have to figure out the lineup because that lineup is just awful and now i'm actually about to go look at how bad they really are because i ain't looked at the numbers i'm just going by the eye test of a guy that hasn't missed a minute of bulls basketball when i had the opportunity to watch so when it comes to point differential that starting lineup is in the 32nd percentile with a minus 6.2 rating which obviously it's not good for it for a starting unit it's just not a good way to start off that the basketball games. You're already digging yourself a hole immediately when the ball tips off. The best lineup the Bulls have had this season um, with more than like 10 possessions together is Caruso, Drogic, Zach Levine, Derrick Jones Jr., and Andre Drummond. It's, yeah, it's not good. I want to see what the numbers are with the two-man lineup of DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine this season. <sighs> they played 250 minutes together. They are a minus 12.9. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Those are our two max players. They cannot be on the court together. That is insane. That is insane right now. I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just frustrated. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that loves his team to death. It's tattooed on my leg. I've, I've watched them from 2003 into 2020. I've been a fan for 20 of my 26 years of life. And the only reason I wasn't a fan for the first six, because I didn't even know what basketball really was. As soon as I knew what basketball was and I can watch basketball, I became a Bulls fan. So this is just a frustration as a, from a guy that loves his organization more than anything. And you know what the worst part about it all? I do not have the answer. How do we fix this? We, you get like interviews after this game. Like I mentioned, um, Zach Levine got benched because he just wasn't good um and he's he's interviewed about it he said that's the decision that billy donovan got to live with for himself it's just like I, it's a lot of passive aggressiveness in these post-game interviews i don't know if, if the boys are rocking with billy anymore i don't know what happens but i will tell you there used to be a saying trust trust ak and ak we trust or whatever our front office for for people that are not familiar with the bulls it's that's that's that was dumb that's not true anymore i'm not just gonna blindly trust anybody I kind of was giving the front office the benefit of the doubt because they were new. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I see that trade. Let's see what that turned into. Well, it's, it's been a year from it, two almost two years from it, and uh, a lot of those trades don't look good. Um, my worry meter on the Bulls is extremely high, mostly because, like I mentioned, we don't own that first round pick unless it is top four. If it was just like, hey, we just gonna be ass, and then we get the sixth overall pick, and now we got somebody else that could come in and help, I would be okay. But the fact that we don't have that pick scares me. I think that because we don't have that pick, the front office might be willing to double down, triple down in this roster, and trade away some of the young pieces who, let's be honest, none of our young pieces other than Io contribute to, to, to basketball right now. They might be willing to trade some of those younger pieces to get somebody to help us right now. And I promise you, there is no Band-Aid big enough to fix this problem. There's no Band-Aid big enough. I'm not saying we got to go the opposite direction where we sell off everything. The, the core three just don't work. And Vucevic is a free agent this season, and there was talks between him and the front office this offseason about potential extensions. I'm going to lose my goddamn mind if I have to watch Vucevic pass this season as my starting center. Just being real. I'm sure he's a cool dude. Never met him. Never met him. I met pretty much everybody in that organization other than Vuce. Um, never met him. I'm sure he's a good dude. Cool dude. But I just can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. And I feel like there's so much more to say. So much more we could talk about. I, I can't get behind the fans that are saying everything is better if, if, when Lonzo Ball comes back because we don't know. Billy Donovan was asked about it today. He said he's getting better, but very slowly. There, I think there's a world where Lonzo doesn't play at all this season. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the front office would want to let Lonzo chill out to become fully healthy. Because obviously something ain't going right over there. That is a diehard Bulls fan's perspective of what the hell is going on in Chicago. Uh, you let me know if you're an outsider. Let me know if you're a Bulls fan because I'm listening.